Hi, Kevin. Hi, Martin. I heard you work for a car sharing service called Green Mobility, and the company is using serverless. Yeah, uh, our dev team is really productive thanks to serverless computing. Oh, maybe you could share some tips on how to use serverless to get your developers more productive? I would be happy to. So, uh, Kevin, uh, Green Mobility is a car sharing service? Yes, uh, we've run a car sharing platform in seven European cities. Uh, we have hundreds of the cars and people use them uh, for thousands of trips every day. Uh, we have about 100 employees with headquarters in Copenhagen and we are listed on the Nasdaq main market. Oh, cool. Uh, I guess many people want to use cars, but not necessarily own cars these days. Yeah, like more and more people want to live in cities and uh, they're interested in sustainability and they also prefer sharing things rather than owning them. Ah, right. Uh, so what kind of data processing does the company need to make this car sharing happen? We process hundreds of thousands of events every day. Uh, a trip st uh, starts, a car moves, uh, a car trip ends. Uh, we could have built this infrastructure for handling these events with virtual machines, but there would have been a lot of work. Instead, we went with serverless, uh, which makes it much easier. Oh, cool. I love serverless. Uh, where do you store these events, Kevin? We store them in Firestore. Uh, we also have a Cloud SQL database for other data, but we got better data writing performance at a lower cost with Firestore. Uh, and Firestore is serverless, which means less operation work for us. Uh, so we will have SQL and no SQL databases. Ah, got it. Uh, machine learning is hot right now. Uh, are you doing that too? We're working on it. Uh, we like to predict what cars will be needed so we can put cars in those places ahead of time. Uh, our plan is to export the Firestore database to BigQuery every night. Uh, then we could run reports in BigQuery and run BigQuery ML to, uh, to do the machine learning on the data. Ah. Are there any other factors that made you go with serverless? We also have uneven demand. Uh, more people are driving during the day than at night, uh, so it would be inefficient to scale our computing and databases up and down uh, ourselves. But Cloud Run and Firestore do, do it automatically. Ah, uh, why did you pick Cloud Run specifically, Kevin? We really like containers, and Cloud Run lets us host containers without having to worry about the service. Uh, if a server is acting up, Google fixes a problem, and we don't have to. Also, we like the billing model. We pay for container time, even if the container is handling multiple requests at the same time. You mentioned billing. Uh, how much are you actually paying for Cloud Run? Our Cloud Run bill has been growing, so I'm keeping an eye on it. Last month, we handled 6 million requests uh, with Cloud Run, and we paid 2,000 Danish kroners, and that's about 320 US dollars. Not too bad. Um, how do you deploy your containers to Cloud Run? When a pull request is merged into the main branch in our source control, a, a trigger automatically builds and deploys the container to our staging environment. And that happens about 50 times per week. And when we're done testing that particular release, we manually run a script to deploy that container to our production environment. And that also happens about 50 times per week. Are you building the containers on one of your machines or up in the cloud? Uh, well, we're using Cloud Build in Google Cloud Platform. Like, uh, our build was uh, recently getting slower and taking 15 minutes, uh, but it was easy for us to change that machine type in one line or in our Cloud Build YAML, which reduced the build time to five minutes only. Oh, nice. So when you do 50 deployments per week, that's a lot. How do you keep these deployments straight? We're big fans of immutable deployments. When Cloud Run deploys a container, you can't tweak settings and environment variables. Instead, you do a new deployment. So immutable deployments prevent drifts in our production environment. Ah, that makes sense, Kevin. Uh, I'd love to hear more about that. Uh, maybe you could tell us more details in the next episode. Sounds good. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have questions for Kevin or me, please add them in the comments. Also, this episode was a little different from others in the Serverless Expeditions series. Please let us know if you found it useful. Until next time.